Hey, Owls. I'm Tegan. And I'm Lexi. We're back with the eighth episode. We're bringing you exciting segments like Fit Checks, Prom the Musical, Feminist Club interviews, and Whirly's Wonders. Winter sports are just around the corner. Bowling tryouts are December 4th, 6th, and 8th at Olathe Lanes East. Also, basketball season is coming up. Here is the schedule. Make sure to show out for our Owls. Yesterday was the fall sports signing. Congratulations to all the athletes that signed. We know you guys will do great things. Speaking of, fall sports have sadly come to an end. We have a fun and informative recap to show off what we did this fall season. Let's send it over to Lance and Gabby. Hey Owls, I'm Gabby. And I'm Lance, and welcome to our fall sports recap. Tennis ended their season in early October, and Lindsey Reuter had a strong seventh place finish at state. Golf finished up shortly after with Savannah Cagle placing seventh as well. Our volleyball team also had a successful season. They were Sunflower League champs with an overall record of 27 and seven. Gymnastics capped off a great season with their fourth place team finish at state. Congrats to Elise Haynes for finishing fourth on bars and Gabby Blinkenbeard for placing third on floor. Congrats to the football team who finished their season off strong. Our soccer team sadly fell to Shawnee Mission West on Tuesday, but finished the season with a record of 14-4-1. Congrats boys on a great season. Finally, our boys and girls cross country team had a great finish at state last week. The girls completed a four-peat and Caleb Woodham was the team's top finisher in fourth place. For our boys, Gunnar Hornung placed 10th and Braxton Thiel placed 15th. Congrats to all the team who finished off their fall season strong and let's get ready for winter. That's all for now. Bye, Owls! Wow, we had a great fall season. I can't wait to see what we do next year. Our very own Olathe the West dance team will be competing at state for their game day competition. It is on Friday, November 17th. Cheer also has their state competition the following day on November 18th. Good luck, dance and cheer. Science, Science Olympiad is competing tomorrow at Olathe North, and the debate team is competing today and tomorrow. Good luck to them as well. Lastly, K-Cub will have their regional competition on Tuesday, November 14th. Looks like we have a fun week ahead of us. Wait, you forgot about our upcoming musical. Oh yeah, we have Prom the Musical, November 16th through 18th. Let's bring it over to Mercy and learn more about it. Our school's theater program has been working hard on our newest production, The Prom. Here is a behind the scenes look along with some interviews. Make sure to come see the show next week. I'm Zach Darby. I'm Lauren Grimes. Uh, Isaac Lowe. Ash Bennett. Megan Ulrich. <laughs> and Jen Anderson. Uh, I'm the stage manager. I'm the hair makeup designer and Mrs. Green. I play Emma. I play Alyssa. <laughs> um, this show is about like these two girls who want to go to prom together, but they're in the Midwest, Indiana, and their PTA freaks out, and everybody like kind of loses it when they cancel prom. And these people who just failed at Broadway, their show was closed on the opening night, which is like awful. Um, they go down there to try and get some publicity by helping her. Um, I would say I connect with Dee Dee because of how over the top she is. I think she's sensitive, but she portrays it in a way that's like, like, she acts like she doesn't care, but she really cares a lot. I mean, I'd say I connect because, you know, <laughs> we're both queer. And also, I feel like Barry acts a lot like how I do. Uh, I connect to Alyssa because as a queer person who has had to go through the process of coming out and being in the closet, I can connect to her on a very emotional level. I would say Emma is this really strong willed person. She does what she wants to and she takes power in what she does. And I think I'm a really strong willed person, or at least I hope that I am. Absolutely not. Uh, Mrs. Green is awful, she's homophobic, and I don't agree with her at all. I would say that this show is different from other shows I've been in because of the choreography. I feel like with this show, it's like so different. The choreography is so like sharp and clean and put together. Yeah. I'd say this show, um, compared to a lot of other shows I've seen, I've seen like connects to a lot of different real world themes, acceptance for the LGBTQ community and just tolerance in general. I adore the set. It's so cool and every piece of it just goes together and it's this, oh, I love it so much. I love the music in this show. It is perfectly composed. Wow, I can't wait to watch this exciting musical. This past Saturday was a great day for the ODA Performing Arts Department, as 54 auditioned and made honors ensemble for the 2023 ECK MEA District Mini Convention, which will be taking place on Saturday, December 2nd. Tegan, have you seen some of our students' outfits recently? Yeah, I have. I was wondering where some of the outfits were from. Well, luckily, I interviewed the students about just that. I'm Lexi, and I'm here with... Aiden Hadari. Question for today is, where's your outfit from? Okay, so my hoodie is from Marshalls. 
It's like my favorite one. And then my shorts are from Nike.com and my shoes are from Brooks.com. Okay, so shoes are platform Converse. Jeans are from Garage. Undershirt is from Altered State. This shirt is from Amazon. Earrings are from Every Jewels. Necklace is from my sister from Christmas. Ring is from my boyfriend. Ring is from my grandma. And I think that's it. I think this is from Amazon and these are from Vans, probably like um, off-Broadway store and yeah, I'm dressing nice because I have a DECA thing after school today. Uh, so the hat is from Justin Boots down in Texas, uh, the same with the jeans and uh, the boots. And then the shirt was from a store, a little store in Tennessee, like a little music store. All right, so the shirt, I got it while I was in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And this lunchbox I found in my garage about a couple hours ago on my way to school. And the pants, sponsored by Champion, actually. Um, a black Nike hoodie, got it from Nordstrom, you know, like 200. Um, you know, Olathe West training top, soccer, free. We got the black shorts. I don't remember where it's from. I think it was a Christmas gift. Probably like 300. Uh, Nike socks, you already know, those those get kind of pricey. Probably like, probably like 50 bucks. And then shoes, probably New Balances, you know, a little beaten. I think it was like, like 2K. Wow, you really do have some good outfits. If you are accepted to NHS, there is an induction meeting on Monday, November 27th at 6 p.m. after Thanksgiving break. Esports hosted their first competition this past week in the library during lunch, and the finals will be during lunch next week. It was an exhilarating matchup of students playing Super Smash Bros. That sounds like fun. Let's bring it over to Kiefer where he interviewed Feminist Leadership Club. Thanks, Lexi and Tegan. Next, let's take a look into the impact that the Feminist Leadership Club makes here at Olathe West. Here's the president, senior, Cassidy Rink. Hi, I'm Cassidy Rink, and I'm the president of the Feminist Leadership Club. So the Feminism Club is more about just empowering women. We like to emphasize empowering all types of groups, all types of barriers being broken, all types of people just being who they are and living to their best potential. Well, when we meet, we talk about upcoming events that we could do. This week we're hosting a domestic violence awareness drive. Um, later in November we'll probably do something for like thankfulness and Thanksgiving and kind of the candy gram vibe. Since the club was founded by Zoe McBee last year, it has over 70 active members. If you or anyone you know is wanting to join, make sure to reach out to an active member or go on the Feminist Leadership Club's Instagram. Anyone can join the club. We have um, obviously naturally more women than men in the club, but there are a couple of guys that join and they actually have a really big like voice in the group as well. For this year, my big goal was to kind of just promote the club. Last year it was founded by Zoe McBee and then she passed it down to me and that was my goal going into it. And I feel like I've done a pretty good job. For the activity fair, we had a lot of new people sign up and join the club. We have about 70 members now, where last year we only had about 20. Um, I think it's growing at a existential rate and I'm hoping that I can keep that going. Feminism is about empowering everybody in your community no matter how they identify because everybody should be able to live to the best of their ability and express themselves in their true form. If you are interested in joining Feminist Club, contact Ms. Ruport. Scholars Bowl meets Wednesdays before school and Fridays after school in room 3111. Prevet Club meets the last Wednesday of every month. Chess Club meets Mondays after school and Dandy meets Wednesdays after school. If you're a member of any reoccurring clubs and want to be featured on OW TV, contact Mix Johnson. We will leave you with this new exciting segment from Amberly. That wraps up this week's episode. Bye, Bye Owls. Well, this is the first episode of Whirly's Wonders where we talk about different kinds of people and what they have in the school. What did you bring us today? I brought um, everything that I've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> I brought a lot of um, things that I've crocheted, a lot of things that I've sewn, altered, things like that. Yeah, and how did you like get into like that kind of like craftiness of like sewing and crocheting? Um, my grandma sewed me a lot of things, and then when she uh, passed away, I was still in like elementary school, but I got her uh, sewing machine, and it was really intriguing to me. I really liked it. I really liked sewing class in like mm -hmm. middle school for crocheting. I just like wanted to start like yeah. I was just really intrigued and I actually talked to Bella Romero one day in English class and we we're like we want to do it found some of my grandma's crochet hooks and oh, then so I cool. just looked up on uh, YouTube like how to do a granny square and then I just kept going from there would you consider this one of your passions or a hobby what's your 
Sure. Let me go there. Pretty big part of myself. I'm using a lot of these things in my uh, portfolio for art school. So hopefully yeah. I can um, use those to get into a school that I can build a career with. Um, but I do consider it a little bit more of a hobby than anything else. It's really fun to be able to make something and then wear it and then show it to everyone. So cool. And then how many pieces do you think you've created? Just like a ballpark of just things you've <laughs> thrown together. Sure. Um, Maybe like 10 or 15 things that I've like made and then probably upwards of like 30 that I've altered and things like that. And then as far as like little stuff, I don't even know <laughs> a lot. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Lexi. Sure.